Hello everybody, this is Andrew, and I hope y'all had a wonderful Martin Luther King weekend. I did. Um, yeah, uh, most people in America typically get a three-day weekend for Martin Luther King Day. He was a very important man. Um, I went to the NASCAR Hall of Fame for the very, very first time in my life. First time I've ever been to downtown Charlotte, about two hours from where I live. So, um, on the NASCAR Hall of Fame, it, it was a pretty fun experience, basically. Uh, I gotta just say, um, well, like, so basically, you walk in and you, you see these. They have all these cars. They just recently put like a new exhibit into the NASCAR of him. So it's the 75th year of the sport. And you see all like cars in chronological order. And they're on this thing called Glory Road. And as you walk up, walk through the hall, it progressively, the banking gets progressively more and more steeper. Um, as you like walk up the like area. Underneath it, they also had an exhibit for the first 800 wins of uh, Chevy, you know, winning its manufacturer NASCAR. Um, yeah, they showed Chase Elliott's winning car from Coda in 2021. That was a Mickey Mouse win, basically, because it was range Jordan. Behind that, you have the Pit Stop Cafe. Pit Stop Cafe is, you know, their uh, restaurant. They had like hot dogs and like body warmer and stuff. Um, going up like the Glory Road, they had some interesting cars up there. We started off, you know, um, from a car from 1950, the second season in the history of NASCAR, Buck Baker, uh, Buck Baker's uh, Oldsmobile. It was red and gold. Behind that was Curtis Turner's, um, 1958 convertible series uh, car, they did do a convertible series, but, you know, they didn't have roofs, and I feel like that's probably, you know, too dangerous to do, but honestly, I don't know why, but I assume they stopped doing the convertible series because one of their cars flipped and, uh, and like, a guy got killed or something. I don't know why they stopped, I'm just guessing on why. That's the reason it stopped or something. They also had Richard Petty car. You know, they had cars from like, the, from like the legends of NASCAR. Richard Petty represented by a car from Pontiac from 1972. Uh, Dale Earnhardt was represented by a car from 1981, which was his third season full-time in the Cup Series. And it was the year following his first championship. Um, a car that Richard Childress drove before, uh, yeah, drove before Dale Earnhardt started racing in the Cup Series. Yeah, it goes in chronological order. They had a Jeff Gordon car, Gordon, like, Pepsi, DuPont, Jeff Gordon car from the late 90s, I think, the thing, like, 1998 or whatever. Um, after Gordon, you had, uh, uh, that's a uh, Dale Waltrip's car from Pocono. His last top ten came in 1998, driving for DEI. Is you know the guy was way past his prime. His team had shut down due to lack of sponsorship, and like the 50 year old uh, Dale Waltrip basically had a top five at Pocono. It was his last, not his last race, but his last good race that he had. Um. They also, the, some of the more recent cars, which we had was on the higher banking, included, uh, you know, um, Jimmy Johnson had a, they had a car that Jimmy Johnson drove, the 48 car, a uh, 48 Gen 4 car from the mid 2000s. Um, they included a uh, car driven by um, Dell Jr. In 2013, the first year of the Gen 6 cars, um, 
I think it's odd for him to choose a car specifically, specifically for 2013 for Junior because he never even won a race. Uh, or not that that season he was winning this, but he did win in 2012 and he won a few races in 2014. They also had a uh, Kyle Busch. Um, they also had a uh, Kyle Busch car. 2018, I believe, is is uh, Interstate Batteries Toyota. And then the most recent cars they had there was a Josh Berry late model from 2020 and a Pinty Series car from 2021. They don't know what the Pinty Series is. It is a NASCAR sanctioned series based in Canada. So, uh, of exhibits, uh, they have like the Hall of Honors, which just has like plaques or the NASCAR Hall of Fame plaques. Again, this, you know, you know, less than a week, Matt Kenseth hasn't really been inducted yet, but he will be inducted soon. Like, he's going to be inducted on the 19th. I went on the 15th, so we still had the class of 2022 cars uh, inside the Hall of Honors. First of all, they did have Dylan Hart Jr.'s 2014 Daytona 500 winning car. Um... They also had a weighted modified score from seven time weighted modified champion Mike Stefanik. He passed away in 2019. God bless his soul. Uh, Red Farmer, also one of the drivers, the third driver from that, a, uh, the, the third driver from that class, Red Farmer. He had a yellow and gold car that he drove in the 60s. Um, in there as well. Um, I would guess uh, now somewhere in the uh, I think it was on the fourth floor. They do have a Matt Kenseth car from two thousand and three for like for an exhibit for closest finish for closest for best finishes in NASCAR. You know, but they probably won't use that car. But when Kenseth gets, in, I would guess what. Uh, Probably uses 2003 championship car. Cook Shelmerdine is no crew chief for Dell and Hart Senior in the uh, uh, 1990s. Uh, before I think it was right before Larry Mack uh, became the crew chief. Yeah, you know, he's also going to be uh, inducted next week, and he is going to be. Um, he also raced in the 2000s, so I guess Eva Verges is a Dell and Hart car from the early 90s, or a car that he actually drove in the uh, mid to late 2000s, 2006, 2007, in that time period. And you had the Pioneer, Herschel McGriff, uh, who, um, yeah, he was a NASCAR driver in the 50s and 60s, but that's not it. Uh, guy has an interesting record. He is the record for the oldest driver to make a star in a NASCAR sanctioned race. He made his final uh, NASCAR sanctioned star in the Arkham Menard series in 2018. At the time, he was 89 years old. I'm pretty sure he's actually still alive right now. So, so I would assume maybe we'll have a car from the 50s. And they're also the winningest Arkham Menards driver as well. If I have a car, maybe from the 50s, 60s, uh, uh, maybe it was a, maybe if I just do the last car he drove from, like, four or five years ago, so. Oh, and, um, they had a simulator. Now, I do have pictures on my phone, but I don't know how to edit, so that's not gonna, you're not gonna see that on the video, but it's on my Instagram, um. The, the so now you have the inter you have like the interactive like NASCAR exhibits. First of all, you have this eye racing inside the car simulator. This was fun to do. I did not do that well. I was in the Eric Amor the right side of the Eric Amaral car in the very back. Um, yeah, the cars they had it was uh Logano, uh. You could go from Gano, Cobbush, Denny Hamlin, Austin Dillon, Chase Elliott, um, 
Matt Benedetto, Eric Amor, they also had a Hall of Fame car, which he didn't go in. That was just a, like a, that's just an AI car, just, you know. It was a Ford Fusion race car that had the, that just said, had the Hall of Fame logo on it. Um, no, I didn't do that good. I wrecked before the green flag even waved, and I even, you know, just, like, screwed. I wrecked before the green flag even waved. I think it broke my string. I had to use the tow truck twice, and I was able to actually complete two laps, and then the guy in the Chase Elliott Hulu's car wrecked me, so uh, I don't think I should be saying Hulu's on TV, uh, not TV, YouTube. I don't know, maybe, I'm just, I'm talking about the company that was sponsored for, okay, I'm, I'm not trying to say anything inappropriate, so don't flag me. Uh, there's also a, uh, a lot of other fun stuff with qualifiers. There's also a thing you can look at, like, iRacing footage of drivers going around tracks. They had an exhibit there from 2020 that had Jimmy Johnson's last car that he drove at Phoenix. Not really his last ride because he's driving for, you know, Petty Mo Sports, now named the Legacy Motor Club. Which I have heard is like, what, like the worst name in NASCAR team history, basically. Okay, it, it sounds interesting. It's weird to see a team name in NASCAR to not end with Moto Sports or Racing. It's Moto Club. No. Um. They also had a like let you see what it's like to call a race. They had two versions of it. They had one for TV, and they had one for uh. They had one for radio. The TV one, I don't think, was working, but the radio one was. Uh, yeah, so I decided to do that. Um, yeah, it was a very fun trip, you know, at the end. Uh, some of the things they haven't necessarily dated, uh, like, up to date, because, so... A while back, I watched this video from Eric Eastep where he went in 2021 and had 2020's memorable moments. I went in January of 2023, and they haven't even finished the 2021 memorable moments cabinet, which is where the 2020 memorable moments was. They haven't even finished the 2021 memorable moments. And so, but it was fun. The gift shop also had like a little, like, Gen 6, 2013 to 2017 Chevy SS stock car in there. Like, 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 the, like that was just, like, sitting there. Nice gift shop. I bought some, bought a yearbook. Bought, uh, and they have a yearbook for Hall of Fame classes. I just bought the most recent one that they have there. I bought a Kyle Lawson shirt and a hat for, uh, a hat that says 75th anniversary of NASCAR. It was probably you know, one of the best trips I've gone through in my life. And bye.